screen now. Should be seeing the uh, the slide deck here. Yep, we can see you. All right, perfect. All right. <clears throat> So I don't have any I don't have any poll questions um, and and that's kind of done on purpose. I want to kind of take um, I want to kind of take you guys I guess you know stem to stern so to speak. Um, we'll start at the bottom. We'll build up to something technical. Um, this can get kind of technical um, kind of fast. So um, hopefully um, you know be, be feel free to shoot some questions um, in the chat. We'll try to you know maybe maybe cover something else uh, or cover something again if. If um, if it gets uh, you know if it gets moving a little too fast, it kind of goes to you know kind of goes zero to a hundred really quick. But um, so today today we're going to talk about ML ops. So um, the the thing about ML ops, well, let me just kind of keep going through. Um, this is a quick bio. Um, I'm not going to read this. Um, you know, obviously feel free to uh, connect with me on um, on social media if you've got questions, or feel free to reach out. Uh, I'm sure we can. Kind of work work out uh, work out some stuff. So so today here's what our agenda is. First, we're going to talk about um, what machine learning is overall, right? So maybe you're new to machine learning, maybe um, maybe you don't necessarily know how machine learning fits into the artificial intelligence lifecycle um, or what that is. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about the Azure um, ML service. So this is the machine learning service that exists inside of Azure. You may already know about the Azure ML service, um, but uh, I think it'd be a good uh, practice to kind of run through some of the major um, steps and milestones in the ML lifecycle uh, through the ML service. And then we'll talk about what ML ops is. You know, so what is ML ops? Um, we'll go through um, we'll go through kind of a um, kind of a walkthrough about the steps that that ML ops uh, contains, um, and then we'll do some do some demo. Um, and then um, I think actually in the slide I've got a couple of sites too for some resources from Microsoft um, to kind of help um, you know hit some of this stuff home um, so you can kind of uh, connect the dots in your head about how it all works together. Um, this thing will be this uh, this uh, presentation will be very demo heavy, so um, uh, the slides are basically just to organize some thoughts uh, around how this is going to take place. So um, so I'm not going to bore you today with slides. Um, but first of all. Um, what is machine learning? So, so I like to throw this um, slide out there um, just to kind of um, level set, right? Because some people, machine learning means different things to different people, or maybe they, um, you know, don't necessarily know how it fits into the whole the whole picture. But but basically, there's multiple types of machine learning, right? There's a supervised, uh, unsupervised, and I always like to throw reinforcement learning in here because that reinforcement learning kind of is a newer uh, a newer area of of artificial intelligence and I like to uh, kind of um, separate that out because it has a lot of scoring and gamification going on. Um, and I, at the end of the day, why do you really need it? Well, um, if you if you want to explain something, identify something, you know, maybe you're trying to um, predict something. You're you know you're trying to cluster something. You're trying to classify something. You're trying to uh, you know do different things um, with data. Um, that that this would be a good uh, adaptation for machine learning. Um, and I always like to throw a couple of comments out here, right? Um, is if you can't do, and this is a math teacher of mine for, from Hopkins, but if you can't do something smart, do something stupid. So the idea is that, you know, if you don't know where to start, um, the, the hardest part is just getting started at something, right? So if you can't really think about what you need to do, just start doing something stupid, right? Because you're going to learn a lot um, as you go, right? So the hardest, you know, the hardest step in a thousand mile journey is the first step. So um, you know, it's one thing that that um, I always try to hammer home, right? Um, and obviously, it's it's interesting that it's a math teacher that says that, right? Because typically, you make math problems harder before they become easier. Um, and additionally, machine learning is just a fancy way of failing fast. So um, it's it's doing things over and over and over and over and over again until you arrive at some answer. So if you think like a like a clustering algorithm, right? You're continually moving that that centroid point around all of these individual clusters until you're finding the minimum Euclidean distance between all those other points. Um, so basically everything up to that point, you're just failing at, at finding the minimum distance, right? So you're just you're just failing fast and fast and fast until you arrive at some answer. So so it's not a um, you know it's not a magic wand that you that you that you wave and then everything is everything's working and, and explained. It's kind of a, this iterative process, right? Um, and that's kind of what um, kind of what MLOps is. Um, but before we jump into MLOps, I want to jump into what the Azure Machine Learning Service is, right? 
right. So, um, so you can see kind of this diagram here. Um, I put a little uh, bow tie here because I think it wraps it all up in a nice, in a nice little package with a little bow on it. So um, it, it kind of uh, collects all of these individual Azure resources into a single workspace service, um, which I think makes it really easy um, to, um, to kind of step through the process of, of building your own machine learning model, right? Um, I, I've got this ML, you know, ML as a service, machine learning as a service. The other reason I throw that out there is because it kind of has this, uh, kind of has this nice little bow on it. But basically, it's um, it packages all these resources together to do workloads at scale. Um, it's a centralized platform, so you can perform, you know, you can write notebooks and, and code inside of here. If you're more code heavy, you can do sort of a clicky, clicky, draggy, droppy interface where you're dragging and dropping algorithms and and um, data. Um, like data prep um, into into the uh, into the designer, which I'll go through here in a second. And um, there's a lot of other um, I say novel concepts. They're they're just methods of preview that are out there to to monitor to to monitor um, data drift and to monitor um, expl you know explanatory models and, and model fairness to try to reduce the amount of bias that we see in some of these models that we're deploying inside the Azure Machine Learning Service. So um, this is where I'll, I'll, I'm going to jump out of the deck and kind of do a quick demo. Um, but this is this this um, slide here just kind of gives you an overall um, how things traverse the uh, the workspace back to your subscription, um, and then where you're getting data from, where you're deploying things, um, those types of things. So that's a good um, that's a good slide to slide to slide to have. So um, right now I'm in the Azure Machine Learning Service. So that's what this um, that's what this window is. Okay. Um, typically, like um, just to kind of quick <clears throat> a quick run through, <clears throat> you have a home screen where you have some 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 uh, previous runs that you may have done. Um, you've got some auto ML features, which um, I'm sure I've got a lot of colleagues that'll give some some auto ML um, run throughs and how that works. We'll have the designer, which I'm going to go into in a second. Um, data sets that exist, so these are registered data sets that um, that occurred in in your in your client. Um, Experiments. Experiments are kind of. Um, I'll talk about experiments in the scope of the designer, um, and I'll probably cover most of these um, as well in the scope of the designer. But I really want to cover this off really quickly. So if I'm moving really fast, um, it's it's on purpose because I want to get to the ML ops piece. So so essentially, what's happening here? Um, if if you were to create a brand new designer, you can pick one of these, any one of these uh, samples, or you can do a um, a blank canvas. Um, I've already got one trained and running. This is just an automobile price. This is one of the examples. But the reason why I wanted to show this is because this is a typical machine learning pipeline flow. All right, so you're going to ingest some kind of raw data. You're going to perform some level of data prep to it. So um, this is cleaning missing values, so cleaning missed data. You know, a lot of times you're going to have rows that have null values or something that you want to get rid of. So um, you're going to have steps about data prep and data transformation. This is a little data engineering. Um, you may, you know, inside of this, these steps in this workflow, you might do some feature engineering uh, um, or you might do some normalization, uh, some parameter normalization or something like that, right? So this is where that stuff happens. Um, you're always, um, well, I say always, but <laughs> I would say 99% of the time, you're going to split some data, <clears throat> right? Because you want to train your model on a subsection of the data and then test that model to be able to score it, right? Um, you're going to pick some algorithm. In this case, there's a we have a linear regression algorithm um, with a couple of couple of um, parameters, right? Um, I can choose to do this through gradient descent or these squares. I can try to um, you know regularize. <clears throat> I could also um, depend on depending on the type of algorithm. I can say like, hey, I want to score this with a mean squared error, or I want to score this with a coefficient determination or an R squared, or you know, I want to score this in different ways, right? So um, you can you can perform some of those um, some of those pre-evaluation steps there. Um, you're going to train your model, right? So this is really the um, so really the meat of the of the pipeline, so to speak, right? Your your algorithm is looking at your your training set and trying to fit data to that training set or or fit the training set data to the algorithm. Then you're going to score that model, um, and scoring that model basically compares that predictive value to that actual value, and then you have an evaluation step, right? Um, and we can visualize, you know, what this what this looks like, right? We can say like, hey, there, here's our mean absolute error, right? So this would be like mean squared error. 
um, relative squared error coefficient. So this R, this this uh, 86 is your coefficient of determination, which is your R squared value, right? Um, it kind of gives you the um, the deviation or the or the measure of the residuals, um, the residual error, if you will, uh, between um, between what that predicted value is and what that actual value is. So this is not that great of a model, but but it's it's um it's just for just for uh, demonstration purposes, right? So um, this is a this is a typical pipeline, right? Um, and you drag and drop these features from the left over into the right. Now, I'm not going to submit this pipeline because it takes like five minutes to run, and I don't think we should really sit here for five minutes doing, doing not ML ops work. Um, but once this is fine, you know, once, once you're agreeing with this and say, hey, I'm ready to put this model into production, right, you create an inference pipeline. So that's where, that's where this box is, you know, and you create a real-time inference pipeline, which I've already done. Um, or I could update it, my my inference pipeline, which I'm not going to because it will require me to run this again. So I've already created that. <clears throat> so let me just show you what that looks like. When you create that inference pipeline, <clears throat> what happens is you get these two extra steps, this web service input and output. Now, what this is intending to do is to say like, hey, I want to be able to submit, um, submit um, you know, a query or sample data or some type of, you know, um, you know, thing, right, to this algorithm to say, hey, I have this brand new situation, right, and I want you to predict what this, we're predicting, uh, <clears throat> we're predicting prices here. So I want you to predict what my price is, right, for this, this new car, right, let's say, like, it's a Toyota, and it's a, you know, a Camry or something, you know, that price is going to be, you know, $9,000 or something, right, <clears throat> and then maybe I change the name from Toyota a Camry to now I want to do a Lexus, right, IS, and that price becomes $13,000 or something. So you can see, kind of see the impact of brand recognition, right, in this particular, in this particular flow. But the reason I'm showing this is because this is, this is what creates that inference um, configuration, right, inside of the um, deployment to the container, right, uh, for, for inference. So <clears throat> let's say that I'm okay with this real-time inference pipeline, Right, everything ran smoothly and completed and, and evaluated perfectly. So I'm going to deploy this. Now I'm not going to click this here. Obviously, it takes takes a couple minutes. But when I click deploy here, what this does, what what the Azure Machine Learning Service does, is it is it runs this um, it runs this 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 actual pipeline run, um, and all of these pipeline runs are collected inside of experiments. Right. So like if I were to go to my experiment and I would look at you know car prices, right. You can see all these runs that have happened right inside these car prices, how long they've taken, right? Um, and I can look at metrics inside of each one of these runs, but but it'll submit that run to this experiment. And then what it does is it takes that model, um, that that output from that from that training um, training step, um, it will register that model, right? So like that's where this I, ha I have this predicted um, predict car price model. It'll register that model, and if it already exists it'll increment that version number. So, right, you can see there's version one right there and here's version two. Um, I renamed it, right? Now it's version one again, right? I renamed it again, right? It's version one again, you know? So <clears throat> it'll automatically increment and register that model inside of a container registry, right? Um, and once it does that registry, it'll create an endpoint, right? So like this is creating an Azure container instance endpoint. So if I go to this endpoint, Right, I can test directly from here, right? So remember how I said, like, hey, you know, you're passing it some parameters. So if I click test, right, now what's happening? It's submitting that brand new thing to my um, brand new thing to my uh, to my model. And you can see it's saying, hey, it's predicting a value at thirteen thousand nine thirty five when the actual price was thirteen four ninety five, right? And if I change this to, you know, let's call this, you know, Lexus, right, and hit test, right. Now it's saying the price is 10,755, right? Um, so you can see how the inference occurs, right? Now, the reason I point out this inference is because there's configuration files that, um, that are packaged with that model when it's registered. Um, and that's what allows the container to ingest this particular sample in this format um, and then pass back some type of uh, raw prediction back Right. Um, in a this is this is a parse. It looks pretty, but basically it's a JSON. It's a JSON output, right? Where you get this where you get this scored label, right down here. And we can plot these, right? So like we could um, we could uh, you know create some type of Power BI visual, or we could create 
you know, some type of, um, you know, we could actually just do it in Python if we wanted to, but we could we could plot these differences, right, between the scored labels and the actual. Um, so we can see our, our variance, right? And that variance is, is uh, encapsulated in our um, evaluation metrics, right? The co coefficient determination, the root mean squared error and all that. So the reason why I'm showing all of this in the machine learning service is not to kind of give you a, give you a, a training on machine learning service, but to try to hit these high level milestones um, that exist inside the machine learning service, right? So we have this pipeline, we're creating, you know, we're training some model, um, we're creating some level of, of model registry, um, and we're um, deploying that um, to a uh, container instance, right? And then we're monitoring its performance, right? So in general, that's that's kind of what's happening inside this machine learning service. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pop back over to the to the deck, right? So I want to open this back up here, right? Um, and kind of go back to here, right? So that's why all of these things exist, right, inside of this Azure Machine Learning Services, because it makes it really easy um, to to kind of collect all that stuff together and create all those compute resources um, in one place, right? So. So hopefully that makes some sense, right? Because now we're going to talk about ML ops, right? So like this is, so you're saying, hey, you know, Brad, this is all well and good, but how do I automate all of this stuff? And maybe how do I bring my own, um, bring my own um, SDKs or toolkits to this, to this, um, to this environment? Well, ML ops itself, right, is not necessarily a a tool, right, that says, you know, hey, I'm going to buy some software and now I'm going to you know, load all my stuff into the software and then boom, I have ML ops, right? So ML ops is intended to be like a, um, like a, a, a process, it's an idea, right? So um, you may use multiple tools inside of that process, right? But um, at the end of the day, you follow a, a similar framework, right, to ML ops. <clears throat> and this is kind of the, um, this, uh, this workflow um, diagram here is kind of, you know, my thought process on how this works. Right, um, and, and I'm sure there's um, there's multiple ways to think about this, but this is kind of how I've I've done some things in practice. Right, so talking through some of those um, some of those steps that I showed you in the Azure ML service. Right, there's a training step, right, where you're doing some type of you know featuring, you're transforming some data, you're scoring, right, you're doing experiments, right. So that's that's what's happening inside of here, right, inside of this training step. Now that training step can be fed. Through um, through any of your own um, in your any of your own IDEs, right? So I've got the Azure Machine Learning Service logo here, but this is just could, could just as easily be done with um, with Jupyter Notebooks or PyCharm or I'm going to show Visual Studio Code. So um, it could be any kind of um, any kind of input. Um, additionally, it could be any kind of source control, right? So I've got GitHub here. Um, I'm going to show you some source control inside of Azure DevOps um, and how I'm using Azure repos. Um, but it could just as easy come from GitHub, right? Um, I, I'm a big proponent of source control, uh, mainly because when I, I'm like to experiment, right? So like if I break something, I want to be able to go back, right? It kind of allows you to um, to iterate with with uh, I don't want to say reckless abandon, but but allows you to um, it allows you to kind of kind of uh, uh, track your progress as you go, right? Big fan of source control. Um, but once you but once you're done training and you're scoring, right? I have this validation step, and the reason I the reason I have a validation step is because are you solving the problem that you're intending to solve, right? Um, is this um, is this a valid model that produces a valid result that solves the business outcome that you need to solve, right? Um, <clears throat> sometimes you know people may throw this validation step up into your experiment, <clears throat> but I find um, I find it um, as I'm separating it, um, it, it kind of helps. Um, Kind of helps uh, bring that business, you know, that functional and technical pieces together to make sure that we're um, that we're performing the right function. Then I have the, uh, a registry. So this is a container registry. Um, I think container or <clears throat> I think model registry is extremely important um, because it'll that's what really gives you that um, that you know that reproducibility, right? That reusability, um, the management of version control. Um, and, and allows you to automate deployment, right? So model model registry is very um, central to that idea, right? Once you have this registry, then I have this packaging step. So um, the reason the reason I think the packaging step is 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 important is because in addition to the model file itself, right, you're going to have a lot of uh, configuration for the for the um, for the container instance that you're trying to create for inference, right? So you're going to have you might have um, 
you know, specific uh, um, like machine learning libraries that you're using or um, specific, um, you know, data, data prep um, libraries that you're using. So maybe you're, you know, these would be um, Conda dependencies, right? If you use an Anaconda environment or these could be, um, you know, PIP versions like, um, like, hey, I use Python version 3.6 or I'm on 3.9 you know, or whatever, right? <clears throat> So this would be those dependencies that need to exist on that are running on the VM that's inside of that um, that's inside of that deployment uh, container, so that it can execute your model right and and spit back the uh, predicted result right. So so packaging is really important, <clears throat> and that can be done in a in a myriad of ways right. Um, you know a lot of times people will use pickle packaging, which I think is is really nice. So. Um, I'll show, that's actually um, what I'll show in my demo. Um, once you have this uh, package model, right, then you deploy it, right? So you're deploying, you know, um, I've got a Kubernetes cluster here that I'm going to be deploying to, but a lot of times you can deploy to like a container instance um, for like uh, some testing. Maybe it's low scalability, doesn't have a lot of compute nodes. You know, you just want to do some, some, some iterative testing to make sure that, you know, hey, it's, you know, um, my, my configuration is correct, or my JSON configuration is correct, or my inference is correct, or whatever, you know, and then you say, hey, right, now I'm ready to go to production, <laughs> right? And that's when you can deploy to Kubernetes, right? Or, or something more scalable, or, you know, however, however you want to deploy and serve up that REST endpoint um, for your users to consume um, the output from your model. So, um, so in general, these, these steps, right? And, and all of this can be automated, right? So um, I'm gonna I'm going to um, pop out of this. Um, well, I think I think that's my only, I think that was my last. Uh, oh, hold on. I think that's my last my last slide. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're gonna do well, we're gonna do the demo. So we're gonna say welcome to ML Ops. <clears throat> so um, the first thing I'm gonna do <clears throat> right is look at some look at some code. All right. So what I'm what I'm showing right here, right? Um, I've got. I'm gonna zoom in here. I don't know if you guys have a hard time seeing that, or um, or if it's visible or not. But I, I've got some some quick. Um, this is the this is a ridge regression algorithm. Um, this is a um, this is on the diabetes data set. So something that um, hopefully everybody is really familiar with, right? Um, so something short, small, you know, easily easily recognizable, right? I'm using um, Scikit-Learn, right? Um, I've got in, I've got pickle here um, as well for this um, this model file name where I can save my outputs, right? Um, you can see I'm 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 using uh, mean squared error, right? To um, to uh, to to uh, evaluate my model, All right? So this would be a this would be a typical, and, and I mean obviously this is really really short and really simple, you know, obviously your models could be more complex. But the idea here is that you have some script, right? You have some training script, right? And this is where you're performing your, your experiments. You're, you're seeing how um, the algorithm matches your data. You're seeing how its outputs look like. Is it predicting correct values? Those types of things, right? So that's what this script is. Um, there's also a score pi script. So this script is more for your inference, right? Your inference schema. Um, there's a, it's always a good uh, practice to do um, to samples right um, within your um, within your code so that you can test it right um, using any kind of JSON. Um, but you can see how um, we're just uh, deploying that particular model file for for scoring inference right. Now, in addition to the raw Python file, so addition to the in addition to the train and the and the um, and the score, you can see that I have these all these run config files. All right. Now, all these run config files um, are the um, packaging configurations for the um, container instances and Kubernetes instances that uh, that we're going to be deploying to, you know, later in the ML ops lifecycle. Right. So um, you can see where I'm like saying, hey, you know, um, I have a conda dependency, so I've written a I've written a YAML for that, right? So if I look at that um, train conda, right, you can see that I have my training environment um, set up. I'm using 3.6.2, I'm using NumPy, I'm using arrays, and I'm using uh, scikit-learn, and I've given a scikit-learn value, and I'm always dropping in the Azure ML defaults. So the Azure ML defaults allow the, um, that's, the um, that's the Azure uh, machine learning Python SDK, 
um, that exists in the Azure Machine Learning Service. So you can kind of see, um, you know, so, so you can kind of use those commands as we're traversing um, the, the, uh, the different steps inside the Azure Machine Learning Service, right? Um, I also have deployment config for the Azure Container instances, right? That's the full config. Here's the YAML, right? I, I like to use um, Bash a lot um, just because it's a lot, I think it's a lot cleaner. Um, and here's the, uh, here's the YAML for the AKS instance. So I've only got, you know, um, one, one to three replicas um, and only a very, very small um, resource requirement for the, uh, for the container. Right. So that's what it, this is what exists in code. Okay. So um, so now I want to pop over, and, I, and I'm going to show this in real time, um, hopefully. Right. Um, so so this is Azure DevOps, right? So I've set up this um, set up this repo or this DevOps project called Tacos because uh, everybody loves tacos. I don't know anybody that doesn't love tacos. So um, but you can see all of my files that exist inside of the Azure repo itself, right? So there's my train file, my score file, um, all my inference config. And in addition to those files, I have this file called, called Automagic YAML, right? So Automagic YAML, right, is the orchestration of the um, Azure ML attachment, the training, like the submit script and the model registry. So when I zoom in here, right? So let me kind of come down here, right? So you can see the this piece right there, right, and this piece right here. Okay. Now the reason I call those out. So the first step is just to uh, give an image, right? And obviously I'm going to get some. I know I know this uh, this VM image is going out of support in September, so it's going to throw me you know some level of error or warning or something in in Bash, but that's fine. Um, the steps here are adding the Azure ML um, CLI. So CLI is the command line interface for the Azure Machine Learning Service. Um, I'm attaching that folder. So this folder is my, um, this is my workspace, right? So like uh, whenever you create an Azure Machine Learning uh, Service um, resource, you, you create all those things I showed you, right? So you create, you know, a key vault, you create a storage account, you create a, um, you know, a container registry, you create app insights, right? And all of that stuff is packaged up into a single workspace. So all I'm doing is attaching my workspace folder, right, to this particular VM so that it can perform functions inside that Azure Machine Learning Service, right? Um, so here is where I'm training that model, right? So like this AZML submit script, and then I'm giving it this, these parameters for my train pie, right? This is really the magic that's submitting that script Against that, um, against that machine learning service, right, and using its compute instances to perform that training um, of my of my script that's in that's in source control, right. Now um, I said you can add a potential approval step before you register, but basically what's going to happen immediately after I train is that it's going to register that model, right. So it's going to take that model output from my train Pi script. Remember how I had that model packaged in Pickle and I was outputting it to an outputs folder, right. It's going to pick up that particular um, output, right? That outputs model pickle file, and it's going to register it in the Azure um, ML service, which then registers it in the container registry. All right. So this is this is kind of a big um, it's kind of a big piece, right? Um, the reason why that's a big piece is because any any um, let me just pull up a command line here. So like any um, let's do like uh, Azure ML. Let's do pipeline. Uh, let's do pipeline as drafts. I think uh, pipeline. Let's do it's this it's that. Right. Um, so what's happening here um, is that remember all of those pipelines that I showed you previously in the Azure Machine Learning Service. You can call all of those pipelines um, in total, right, um, from command line. Right. So you can see, hey, here's my here's my um, that's my, the one I showed you guys, right? You can see the last time I submitted that run, um, what's its, what's its type, you know, it's coming from the Azure Machine Learning Service, right? Um, different things like that, right? And here's my inference pipeline, right? So there's my inference, inference, um, inference names. Um, I can see my, uh, deployment info, right? Um, its name, those types of, those types of aspects, right? Um, so everything inside the Azure Machine Learning Service, right? So I could do like AZ ML model. Um, list. I think I think I can do that as well. 
and um, it'll pull up every model that I have um, that I have registered inside the ML um, the ML service. I'm hoping this will go a little bit faster. Okay, there we go. All right, so you can see I've got several models uh, registered, um, and also you can see inside that registry, right, is is the version as well. All right, so that's that's really um, that's really good because inside of this uh, build pipeline and my release pipelines, right, I can pick the latest version and deploy that latest version to my container instance, right. So that's why that's important, right. Um, so, so now that I have this in, in um, I'm showing you all this code, right? If I jump over to my build pipeline, right, and I pop into edit here, so you can see what this looks like, it's basically just that YAML, that auto magic YAML. Um, and the reason, that's the reason why I like to, to keep all that stuff in code, right? So that I can control that, that version. Um, I've got some variables at the top. So like if you wanted to use a script like this, um, and just plug and play your own resource groups and workspaces, you can totally do that, right? So um, just change, you know, some of the paths, you can change some of your experiment names, your model names, um, and your, your AKS name, right? I like to, you can tell, I like to, to preface everything with BJAR, right? That's just to kind of make it unique, right? Um, but what will happen is because I have this build pipeline set to, um, oh, I meant to click triggers. Let me do this and go to triggers, All right? Well, so I'm uh, I'm enabling the continuous integration trigger, right? And and the reason why this is important, right, is so that anytime that I and I'm going to do this do this um, in this demo as well. Anytime that I make a change uh, to the particular um, to particular model file or the score file, or maybe I'm you know registering some new new model or whatever it's going to trigger this build pipeline again, right? So it, that, that's kind of where you have that, you know, continuous, you know, this, it, it started, it's the beginning of that CI, CD uh, pipeline, right? It's, it's meant to pick up all these changes and immediately go straight back and train, right? And immediately register new models and immediately keep them, keep them as, as up-to-date as possible inside of production, right? So once we create this build, you know, once this build pipeline completely finishes, then we'll get into our releases, right? So the release pipeline, right? So let's do, let's click edit here. So the release pipeline takes in a couple of artifacts, right? So um, let me kind of zoom in here. Hopefully you can see this. Um, on my screen, like I had to zoom in probably about 200%. So these boxes are probably about the size of my hand uh, right now. But, uh, but hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys can, can see these and, and it shows through on the video as well. But, um, but basically I have um, my tacos artifact, right? So this is my, um, this is my uh, Azure repo, right? So that's being monitored. And then I have this model name artifact, right? So inside this model name artifact, basically I've made it super generic, right? Um, it doesn't say anything about diabetes. It just says, hey, this is the name of my model, right? Um, but you can see this default latest version, right? For, hey, I'm picking the latest version of my model name that's inside of my, um, that's inside of my uh, workspace. Right. Once something gets triggered, you know, by this um, by this release pipeline, it's going to deploy it to an Azure container instance. Right. Um, and the reason I do this, I do the container instance first before the Kubernetes instance is because if I wanted to do some kind of um, training or not training, but if I wanted to do some kind of testing. Right. I can do all of my testing in the container instance. Right. And then deploy to production. Right. You don't want to do any. Uh, well. I'll just leave that at that. You want to do all your testing before you go to production. So um, there's a there's an extension right that exists right inside of um, the Azure DevOps instance um, that uh, allows you to call these steps in the Azure Machine Learning Service right. So this is an this is a model deploy step right. And there's other steps right. There's a model registry step. There's you know there's different things that you can do inside these release agents. Um, but I just wanted to do my deployment. So so what this is going to do. Right, it, it pulls up my service connection, right, um, and it looks for that model artifact, right. So it's finding the model artifact that existed, right, in the in the um, in the previous uh, pipeline step, right, um, and then it's going to create that container and deploy it, right. So it's going to create that container instance using this inference config, right. So that's why I have my my tacos artifact in there, right. Because I'm using that inference config YAML for my container instance, so I'm telling the container how to get built, 
right? So um, if I'm saying, hey, I want you to build with with these many nodes and this much you know, RAM and this much, and I want you to also pip install, you know, all these things that I need for my model to work, right? So that's what that inference config file is. Um, and then the deployment config file um, is, is for the container instance as well. So that's your, that's your nodes, right? That's your compute targets, right? Um, and I'm calling it model-ACI for a container instance, right? Um, so once that deploys and everything's good there, right? Um, then I'm going to go back to my pipeline. That's then it's going to go to the AKS instance. So this would be my production instance. Now the job and task is similar, and I'll show it in a second. But the reason why um, I have this broken out into steps is because I have a couple of gates here, right? So I'm saying, you know, hey, um, you know, I, I put myself in here. Like I have to be the one to approve uh, this particular testing before this goes to production. So this won't continue to deploy to AKS until until I've uh, until I have some approval process, right? Or I have some change manager process, or maybe you have a cab uh, process, like a a change advisory board, or some type of you know change management process that in your organization. So like you can have those um, gates and triggers to say, hey, these have to be these have to be done, right? Um, or this gate has to pass, or the all or an X percentage amount of my test cases or, or Python assertions have to pass before this particular goes to um, this particular model goes to um, a production uh, a production level instance. Right, so that's what that's what's happening here. So if I go into the task, I'm doing the same ML model deploy. All right, same model artifact and all that. Same inference config. Um, however, I've changed my uh, deployment config. Right, so I got to use the AKS deployment. Rather than the container instance deployment, right? A couple different, um, couple different flavors of of container deployment, right? Just to kind of show some some versatility, right? So hopefully um, all of that makes some sense, right? So you can kind of see how we're traversing, right? So let me pull back up the pull back up the deck here, right? So hopefully you can see how we're traversing this particular piece of the lifecycle, right? Um, so we're we're doing our training, right? That's happening in the script. Uh, we're kind of skipping over a little bit of validation, assuming that my 86%, you know, um, you know, accuracy is okay, right? And and I'm 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 solving the business problem. So that, the reason I, that's why that's why that's there. Um, I'm also using Visual Studio Code here, which I skipped a little bit, but you get the idea. Um, I'm registering um, that particular model, right, inside the Azure Machine Learning Service, right? I've packaged everything together, right? Um, with all of the with all of the stuff in my repo, right? I've got all the configuration, I've got all the dependencies, I've got the model, all that stuff in, is in one place. Um, and then I'm deploying that to um, container instances and and Kubernetes, and I'm automating all of that in Azure DevOps, right? So you can kind of see how that how that uh, flow is working, right? And how that's gonna gonna exist here. So let's let's fire this thing off. So let me pull this up. Uh, let's uh, let's just add a comment here to my train file. Uh, let's just let's just take this let's just take this out, All right? And I'm going to hit Control S to save that, All right? You can see I got a little um, get get uh, modification uh, flag there, so I'm going to close this. All right? I'm going to go back to my source. I've edited train.py. Let me close this. I've edited train.py, so let's do like uh, demo, you know, trigger, and control enter, right? So we've committed our committed our changes, all right? So now I'm gonna um, gonna sync those changes with uh, Azure repos, all right? And that's all well and good now, all right? So if I go back to my files, love train, you can see my comment is gone. Everything's committed. All right. So now, if we go to our pipelines, you can see that that fired off that that uh, that trigger. All right. Now this is going to take this is going to take a little bit of time. Um, so now would probably be a good time to answer um, maybe answer a couple of questions about um, about what I've went over um, and how it's um, how it's working. I don't, I don't think I see any. I see I see a couple things out there, but um, they're just confirmations. Um, yeah, you know, feel free to feel free to speak up if you need to um, if you need to see anything. But you can see what's happening inside of this job run now, right? So we've um, we've checked out the repo, 
we've installed the CLI, we've attached the folder to the workspace, and now we're performing this model train, right? So like if I were to jump over to my, to my Azure Machine Learning Service and I look at pull up experiments, you can see here, this is today. So I've fired this thing off, right? And you can see that here's what's happening. It's running, right? See, it's preparing. So if I look at this run, right, it's queued, right? Um, so as this is performing, it's, it's, um, it's training against my computer, my compute cluster. So this is my compute target. Um, so that's gonna take, that's gonna take some time to run, right? Um, but what, as it's running and once it finishes running, you're gonna get something similar to like this, right? So remember how like inside of my script, I, I defined mean squared error as a means to, um, as a means to um, uh, uh, grade or evaluate my particular model. So you can see like, um, I've ran this a few times, that's why you're getting multiple things here. Um, but you can see it's, 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 uh, it's training rate. Um, and you can see my alpha here, so this would be my learning rate. But if I pop back over to pipelines, you can see like it's taking, it's gonna take a minute, right? Um, so it's spinning up clusters, it's provisioning nodes, it's it's running things, right? Um, but what'll happen, right, is the output of this particular this particular run, we're gonna get a registered model, right? So we're gonna get something like this, right? We're gonna get a model name and we'll get a model version five, right? Um, and we'll see like we've got some output artifacts, right? So there's my pickle file, right? Um, obviously that's in binary. So if I click on this, it's gonna be a bunch of bunch of gobbledygook. But, um, but uh, I don't have any explanation or fairness or, or anything. These are both in preview, right? Um, I see one question came in for someone not into ML every day. I guess it's just perhaps some courses dust off. Andrew NG for knowledge from a few years ago. Um, so uh, that's that's a tough one. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good courses. Um, there's a lot of good courses from Hopkins. Um, I found my most um, my most useful courses are just dusting off algorithms, just knowing data structures, knowing algorithms. Um, I'm a Python guy, so I like writing a lot of Python. But uh, so dusting off maybe some of your some of your Python knowledge. Um, but uh, but knowing how to um, I guess knowing how to traverse data. Um, one thing I really like to use to kind of uh, dust off maybe some things that I might have forgotten is um, I like to use O'Reilly books a lot. So because um, they come with a lot of um, they come with a lot of samples. Uh, they come with a lot of um, I guess a wide array of knowledge um, across the different, you know, multiple disciplines. So I like to use those. Um, I'm also a big math guy, right? So um, brushing off on statistics, computational statistics, uh, you know, um, uh, calc three, you know, multivariate calc, complex analysis, um, discrete math, those, all those types of things. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, I find that like, um, if I if I study specific algorithms, or study specific tool sets, um, my knowledge gets a little um, gets a little uh, pointed, like kind of kind of uh, pigeonholed, if you will. Um, so where if I understand more of the broad uh, depth behind uh, particular algorithms, I think that makes a lot of uh, I think that like makes a lot more sense uh, in my head anyway. Um, but yeah, see, this is still training. Um, but once that once that trains, this usually takes five to six minutes, and I probably should have. Um, triggered this off as I was covering off on the releases, but I wanted to make sure you guys um, saw these steps, right? And how that's, and how that's being orchestrated. Um, sorry, my dog's in the background, but um, uh, just seeing how that stuff is orchestrated inside of um, Azure DevOps and then how that traverses each milestone um, that exists inside of Azure Machine Learning, um, Azure Machine Learning Service um, and how you can call, you know, each one of these artifacts, right? So like if I did like, Azure ML experiments, experiments. Um, I think this is just a list. Um, let me just, uh, yeah, Azure ML experiment list. Um, you can pull, you can call any one of these things. It'll produce a JSON object, right? Um, inside of uh, command line, right? So you can see like, there's my experiments, right? Um, let's see. These are all by experiment ID. So um, grabbing that particular ID, I'd have to go back and see 
um, what exists inside of here, what that ID is. So these are script run type tests, right? If I pulled up, you know, this one, for example, right? This, um, this run ID, right, would be the run of the experiment, and then I'd have to find the experiment ID. But you kind of you kind of see how that's um, how that occurs, right? And so it's still training. Um, but the release schedule itself, so once that finishes training, right, and, and registers, right, then this particular, um, this particular release pipeline will say, hey, you know, I've got a new model name, right, so I need to now pick up and deploy to, to the container instance, right, um, and when that happens, right, I'll get, uh, it'll see like, hey, there's a, well, there's a, there's a model registry just now, so it must have just finished. Right, um, and then it will go out and create one of these endpoints. Right, so it'll create a model ACI endpoint. Right, and there's my REST endpoint that I can pass. So I can copy and pass this to anyone right who wants to submit a um, to submit a call uh, to this particular model. Right. So uh, nice session. Join late. We'll record. Yeah, the recording will be available. Yes. Um, Rice courses. Um, in other places, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know about Rice. I, I mean, I am in Houston, so um, but I'm not. Uh, I don't know about courses at Rice um, that much. Um, but um, I mean, I, I always find like I, I I like the and this is maybe more of a personal preference, but I like the cross between software and hardware. So I'm more into the um, the human machine interfaces and the bio, you know, sort of like the bioinformatics. Of, of you know uh, of the machine learning life cycle so like um, you know sort of reading um, you know neuron synapses or something like that that makes that that's where my um, my I guess uh, interest is so like a lot of the courses that I like are you know sort of um, you know those types of interface courses um, I like neural nets um, I think those are those are those are really nice too um, I'm a big fan of graph theory I don't know why I just that that bipartite graphs make a lot of sense to me. So, so I like I like a lot of graph theory. Um, but again, uh, I think if you're if you're if you're trying to get um, root um, root machine learning knowledge, I think it's all in math, right? It's all in statistics. It's all in calc. It's all in um, you know different types of discrete math, linear algebra, those types of things, right? Um, that'll take you a long way. Um, Azure ML. Um, also, as a designer and automated ML IX, how would you follow this process for a data science use case done as a designer? Okay, so so that is a really, really good question, um, Maruf. I, I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know if I am or not. But um, but yeah, so just like how um, we're submitting script runs, right? So like that's that's what this that's what this is, right? This um, so uh, right here, right? So inside of here. Oh, did I? Yeah, I zoomed in too far. I'm trying to zoom in. Control one. There we go. So like this piece right here, right? This Azure. Oh no, not that piece. This piece. This Azure ML submit script, right? So that piece. This submit command, right? Submits your script, right? Specifically. So that would be. That's the reason why I have this scripted, right? Now, inside of the Azure Machine Learning Service, these things, right, these things that exist that you're dragging and dropping, these things are called pipelines, right? So, like, if you're wanting to automate, you know, any one of these particular steps or the entire pipeline itself, right, um, you have to publish the pipeline, right? So, that's what this publish is, right? So, like, if I go back to my CLI, right, and I say, like, let's do Azure ML pipeline list. This is going to give me nothing, right? And the reason this gives me nothing is because I don't have any published pipelines, right? So I can't submit pipeline, right? Like, um, like just like there's a submit script, there's a submit pipeline, right? So like you could automate that submit pipeline step, right? Um, if you if you wanted to, right? Just the sim same way that I'm automating the particular script pieces, right? So what? the things are called that I showed you today are called pipeline drafts, right? So if I do pipeline list draft, or maybe I forgot an S. Uh, hopefully, I, I think I did forget an S, yeah. So like S, there we go. 
I did mean list drafts. <laughs> so um, this list drafts will actually give you this return, right? So this entire uh, pipeline itself. Now you can go even further granular, right? And you can call individual pipeline steps, right? So each one of these, each one of these things, right? So let me let me kind of go back to the experiment here and show you the car prices again. So like we're using, so this is a this is a pipeline run, right? You can see the tags, right? Azure ML pipeline component pipeline, right? This is coming from the designer, which is true, right? So let's look at this run, right? So you can look at these steps. Each one of these steps has their own run and run ID, right? So you could call each one of these steps individually, right? As you're traversing the pipeline itself, so that if you had particular gates or something that you wanted to stop, like, hey, let me stop after my data preparation steps. And then I can say, you know, hey, is my data prep correct, right? Is, did I, um, you know, am I getting rid of all my nulls or something? Or, or am I normalizing all of these features together so I don't have any bias? Am I um, creating features correctly? Am I, you know, how many records do I have? What is my 70-30 split or 80-20 split or whatever your split is? Right. Um, you can call each one of those particular steps, right, and and uh, step through them sequentially in Azure DevOps in a YAML, just like I would with any kind of submit script, right. Um, so that's a really good question. Um, it is possible, um, and it is a method to um, sort of use the designer in that way. Um, but ideally, the way that I've seen a lot of that work in the past is you build the designer, you have a complete pipeline flow. And then you just call the entire pipeline, right? Um, you don't necessarily step through it individually. Um, additionally, like the Azure ML CLI, right, has a lot of power to it, right? Um, and it'll have a lot of uh, different connections to it, right? So, like inside of the Azure CLI, I can, um, you know, um, create compute targets, I can create containers all from the CLI, I can do um, folders, jobs, I can do scheduling, I can create like con job, con. Uh, cron jobs, I can create, um, I can even call um, inside of a individual pipeline, like I can call Databricks steps inside of my Azure Machine Learning Pipeline, right? So let's say that I had like a Databricks instance, right, that ran some kind of Spark um, query or Spark, um, you know, medallion architecture that exists inside of Databricks where I'm doing some kind of data engineering. Um, I can call that step amidst my pipeline, use that output inside of the Azure Machine Learning Service finish my training and model registry inside the Azure ML service and deploy to Kubernetes all automatically from DevOps, right? So, I mean, there's lots of different ways um, that this can go. That's why I wanted to make sure that, um, that whenever, whenever you took away from this, this, this talk was not necessarily that it's a piece of software, right? It's not, it's not a, you know, it's not a tool that you throw at it and then now I have ML ops. It's more of this uh, a thought process and, and kind of theory uh, behind how you perform your, your um, you know, how you perform machine, um, like machine learning engineering, right? So how you do that particular pipeline um, and how you, um, and how you ultimately create these, these particular tenants, right? Oh, I put an X through it. I meant to draw a box, but how you, um, how you, uh, how you achieve, you know, these ML ops tenants, right? That that's kind of what this is all about. Um, the uh, Azure MLI, I've got some links. Um, got some links, or Azure ML CLI, I've got some links inside this um, inside this uh, deck. And sometimes these links, um, I've I've noticed that sometimes these links get broken. They they seem to move the uh, CLI for ML um, around a good bit. So so be careful with this. But um, the Azure ML CLI, if you just Google that or, or you know, Bing that, I guess I should say, um, you can, uh, you can, um, you know, you can, you can get some of that, um, some of that information. But, um, but overall, you know, um, there it is. Um, it's a, I think it's a, I think it's an awesome way to, to, um, to automate these things. It's a great way to um, ensure, okay, so that finished, um, you can see that, uh, yeah. So you can see that the, the training finished and the new release finished and the new release deployed, right? You can see there's four warnings. The warnings are probably just telling me, yeah, Ubuntu 16.04 is about to be deprecated. That's great. Um, and then these, um, these, uh, three, um, these three resource um, warnings are just saying, hey, the CLI is not available. So then it goes and installs the CLI and it's gonna say, hey, I can't find your login. Okay, 
it's going to go log in, right? Using a separate using a separate um, login information. So that's all those are. Those are soft soft warnings. But um, the the, um, the model name obviously got to got to level five, and you can see that hey, this is a this is pending approval, right? So I could click approve here, right? And then it'll start its deployment to AKS, right? Um, if I if I wanted to. Um, but um, AKS costs a little bit of money, so um, probably not going to do that. But um, but what'll happen is I'll get like an email um, that uh, let's go through here that kind of looks like this. Let's open this up. All right. So you get an email that looks like this and say, hey, there's a deployment stage. Like somebody needs to approve this. Right. All the approvers have to have to have to arrive at this before um, you know before before we can spin this out to production, right? And if I just click view approval, it'll take me to that, it'll take me to that release pipeline. So um, we're right at time. Um, and I know I said a ton, right? Um, so, and I don't see a whole lot of other um, questions out there, um, but, uh, but hopefully um, you guys got a little bit out of this and kind of understand, you know, a little bit how it works, a little bit how to connect the dots, right? Um, and, and a little bit of the power, right? I'm using a lot of PowerShell, I'm using a lot of Bash, um, but uh, it's a method to, to achieving this, right? Um, just as easily as I could do this in Azure DevOps, I could do this with GitHub, I could do GitHub Actions, I could use workflows, I could do the same kind of thing, right? Um, create task flows, create workflows, um, spin up all these resources the same kind of way, right? Um, it's just how you achieve that, right? So hopefully the idea of MLOps um, it's kind of you, you get a little bit about you know a little bit of flavor of MLOps from this uh, from this demo. So um, so Crystal, you wanna you wanna take it away? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brad. Um, I see a couple of questions in here asking if the recording will be emailed. Yes, it will be emailed in your email box tomorrow around noon Eastern Standard Time. If for any reason, let me go ahead and share my screen here and give me one second. Um, if for any reason you guys um, cannot, uh, you guys don't get the recording or it gets misplaced, they are always on our YouTube channel as well. Um, and you guys can feel free to um, check out our YouTube channel and see it there too as well. Um, let me think, there's, but you guys will get it around noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you guys have any questions until then, I'm actually gonna put up the um, our social media channels here so you guys can um, see those too as well. So let me do that really quickly. There you go. And those are all of our social media channels. So if you guys would like to stay connected with us, please feel free to do so. We usually put our webinars out. We put any of our offerings out. So if you guys want to just kind of stay up to date, follow us on social media. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Brad or myself. If not, we'll see you guys in the next webinar. Thank you guys so much for joining. And as usual, Brad, thank you so much for hosting. We greatly appreciate it. You guys have a good rest of your Tuesday. Yep. Sounds good. Appreciate everybody. Yeah. Cheers.